Last week, I covered Sulaco, a game heavily inspired by fear. This week, we're doing it again. I'm covering Trepang 2. However, unlike that Sulaco preview build, this build for Trepang 2 is something you are going to be able to play for yourself very soon. This is the demo coming out on June 13th on Steam, so be sure to check it out. Hey, Jarek the Gaming Dragon here. On that Sulaco video, I would get the occasional comment that would say something along the lines of, there's no horror and fear is a slow tactical shooter. This is nothing like fear. What? How did you come to... You know, I think I know what's going on here. The people that left those comments haven't played Fear in a very long time, and they only did once. And when they did play Fear, they played it slow, peeking around corners. I hate to use this phrase, but I need to explain why Fear is so memorable. You're playing the game wrong. That's not why people remember Fear. They remember balls to the wall action. They remember chaos, explosions, chunks being taken out of walls, particle effects everywhere. Hell, you can jump kick people and turn them into a misty cloud of blood with a shotgun. It's clearly not a tactical shooter. This is what people remember so much about Fear, that crazy combat that we haven't really seen properly replicated since. As for the horror, well, there's a few moments that stand out. Everyone remembers that ladder scene. But for the most part, the horror was just a pacing mechanic in between the combat. While arguably no one has done the combat better than the original Fear, lots of other games definitely have done horror better. In this demo, Trepang 2 doesn't really seem to worry itself too much with any other aspect of Fear other than just crazy action. And I'm fine with this. Though I do need to state that, again, this is a demo of a work in progress, so all of this could change. Now, I've actually known about Trepang 2 for a long time, and it's easily one of the most requested games for me to cover on this channel. I've known about this since long before I was getting comments about it, but I was waiting for more content so I could make a proper video. The last time I played Trepang was a couple of demos ago, where it was more of a proof of concept, and man, and it has come a long way. Even graphical options surprised me. I didn't expect this game to support DLSS, but it does. And just in general, there is a ton of graphical options to tinker with. I put everything to max settings and the game seemed to run perfectly fine until there were too many explosions and too many bodies piling up and then my frame rate started to explode. It kind of reminds me as to when Killin' 4 2 first came out and they added Nvidia Flex, which was supposed to add physics to jibs and blood but as you can predict, it majorly tanked your frame rate, so most people just kept it turned off. That said, this game ran perfectly fine. It was just in extreme situations, like say in the survival mode where bodies started building up. If you go to supplies, there's even a cleanup option, which will fix your frame rate. So yeah, this is more a problem that you're only really going to be seeing in the survival mode. I'll talk more about that later. The rest of the tech for this game, though, is quite solid. The demo never crashed. It didn't really have frame rate issues, aside from what I mentioned earlier. There's an FOV slider, and there's no mouse acceleration that I could feel. In fact, the mouse aim felt very smooth. In general, I just didn't expect this game to look this polished. This also applies to animations and audio, just very solid. I was also surprised that there was a story at all. Well, kind of. The game starts with you locked up in a room with a soldier getting you out, who then leaves refusing to elaborate. So you're escaping a jail, but as you are, you're seeing something else killing people. You don't know what's causing this, and it's not really made clear. You also don't pick up the sword, which left me very disappointed I wanted to use it. Eventually, you escape this prison to find out it's a military prison of some sort. That or it's being run by a company called Horizon. It's not really made too clear here. As for now, that's all I really know. The point is they are trying for a story, cutscenes and all. But okay, enough of that rambling. You don't care, you just want to see some combat. Well, this too has been fleshed out quite a bit since the last time I played it. In fact, they've added an entire stealth mechanic that is 100% optional, but it's there if you want to use it. When you're crouching in the dark, a white dot will appear in the center of your screen, that's when you know you can't be seen. They also added a cloak, which I used totally wrong at first. They introduced this cloak to you right after stealth, so I assumed I just need to crouch around with stealth. Also, a part of my crisis brain would tell me that cloak would wear away slower if I wasn't moving, and that's not the case. You can full-on sprint with cloak, it really doesn't matter. So if you're using cloak, the best way is just cloak and run at the enemy if you're trying to grab them or whatever you're trying to do. So yeah, you can use this cloak quite aggressively. Other than that, you can sprint, slide kick, and jump kick. However, just like Sulaco, I very quickly found out that you can jump out of your slide, and there's nothing more satisfying than jumping out of that slide and drop kicking someone in the face. You can also pseudo bunny hop by just slide jumping all over the map until your stamina runs out. Yeah, there's a stamina system in this game and that keeps you in check. As you probably have already noticed, kicking people in this game is hilarious. The physics are wild. In any other game, I would assume this is a glitch, but in this game, 
it's a feature. You've also probably noticed that slow-mo is a thing you can do in this game, and you're going to be doing it a lot. Just like in the original Fear, you get a lot of slow-mo, so use it liberally. As for the weapons, you don't get too many of them, but what is here is immensely satisfying. Your starting pistol is the Mark 23, and these do about what you would expect. This SMG is a Chris Vector, and you know I'm going to be very happy about any high fire rate SMG, that's sort of my thing. The assault rifle is the VHS, and this does about what you would expect. Nothing too wild here. The DMR is a very odd choice. This is an SLA, which I can only assume is a throwback to the G2A2 in the original Fear. Even if the G2A2 was a more standard fully automatic assault rifle in the original Fear, you get my point. I'm totally down. I've always loved how this SL8 model looks, specifically this one with the long separated top rail. This is also the only gun in the game where you can aim. And last, but certainly not least, is the Spaz 12. I mean, yeah, it's inspired by fear. Do you really expect there not to be a Spaz 12 in this game? Or at least an incredibly satisfying shotgun that can turn people into peanut butter and jelly without the peanut butter. This game even nailed fear grenades, which I found to be incredibly fun. They're round, they roll wherever you need them to go, they're easy to throw, they have ridiculous effects, and best of all, they're contact grenades. Oh, also you can shoot them out of the air too. But that's not all. Once you get done with this first mission, which will take you roughly 20 minutes, you'll get to a base camp. In this camp, you can take a shot, which allows you to dual wield. I don't know how this makes sense. Apparently his left arm was just too weak until you took that shot. That's not canon. This doesn't make any sense. I'm not complaining. I can dual wield now, and these weapons just became two times as satisfying. Spaz 12 shotguns, of course that's going to be fun, but I actually found the Vector to be the most satisfying. That just shreds people. Anyway, that base camp I mentioned. At this base camp, you can check out the weapons, they're all at a gun range. You can change your outfit, which in this demo really only affects your gloves and your legs, but hey, it's nice to be able to change that stuff. You can select missions here, which in this demo there is only two, and you can choose a horde mode, which has three maps on it. The survival mode I didn't expect, and I'm very happy about that, because this is the style of game where that works perfectly. If you want raw combat, then this is your jam. The second level in this demo isn't exactly too different from the survival modes anyway. You go to a Horizon facility to start hacking computers and then you basically defend them while enemies try to attack you. More or less the same, but a little more involved. Now you're mostly going to be fighting your traditional military enemies wearing body armor. However, there are a few other types to mix it up. You got your standard shield enemies, which you can just slide kick right through them. Then you have this game's heavy, which has a tank on its back that you can shoot to blow it up. And then you still gotta shoot them a bunch more to kill. There will definitely be more enemy types in the final game, but for a demo, this is fun enough. One last thing I briefly mentioned is that you're able to grab enemies. You can grab them right away from behind, or you can stun them to pick them up. This gives you three options. You can throw them via crisis style, you can punch them in the face and absolutely obliterate their head. Or you can do my favorite, set off one of their grenades and throw them at an enemy. I don't think I need to say that I'm really enjoying this demo. It gives the player so much freedom to do whatever they want in combat. That said, it is just a demo, so what's here is a little slice of what the final game will be. And as a reminder, this is a work in progress, so all of this is subject to change. They didn't tell me to say that, and I'm not sponsored, but I wanted to make that clear. So when this demo comes out on June 13th, it's free. Go try it out and put this game on your wish list. That should about sum it up. I hope all you guys have enjoyed this video as much as I have enjoyed this game. Thanks to all of you that joined me on Twitch. My Twitch is twitch.tv slash Derek for Gaming Dragon. You can see it in the bottom right. If you subscribe on Twitch, you get to see my videos at least one week ahead of time. But whether you do or don't go to my Twitch, thank you all for watching this video.